Welcome to the archive of the Second World War Experience Centre. Today we are looking at bomb disposal on the home front with Colonel Bertram Stuart Archer. Colonel Archer, known as Stuart, was interviewed by David Talbot in 2002 about his service in the Corps of Royal Engineers as a bomb disposal expert. In 1940, Stuart was based in Cardiff with number 104 bomb disposal section with one sergeant and 12 sappers under his charge. One of Stuart's most hazardous jobs was disarming an unexploded bomb during a blazing fire at the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company's refinery near Swansea. This presentation is illustrated with the images from another of our bomb disposal experts, James Timberwood of Number 2 Bomb Disposal Company, which operated as part of Number 1 Bomb Disposal Group. The scale of bombing in Britain between the end of September 1940 and the beginning of July 1941 saw bomb disposal companies dealing with a mean average of 84 bombs per day. Members of bomb disposal units received no extra pay despite their highly dangerous job. I was posted to Cardiff because at that time, in the early 40s, the targets being bombed by the Germans were the docks, not London. London was not bombed until September 1940, and I was sent to Cardiff where the bombs were in fact falling. And that's how I started off my bomb disposal set up, with 14 young men who knew nothing more about bomb disposal than I did, uh, and we learned the hard way by finding out that we can dig this up and what happens now. Uh, roughly, uh, the, the, a new subaltern into the bomb disposal had about 10 weeks to live. There were a lot of people being blown up by the bombs that they were trying to dig out. The bombs usually were buried or partly buried. The men that I had with me dug down in order to expose the bomb itself. Uh, and then I had to look at it and decide how we were going to cope with fusing that particular bomb. And this, most of it was purely guesswork. One had a lot of digging in order to get at it, and in many cases, having got down below, you'll find that the fuse was on the side of the bomb, which is underneath, and a, a lot of digging and, and uh, scraping around had to be done by the men to, to give uh, me the access to the fuse itself. Uh, this was uh, in round about the sort of August 1940 uh, and was in fact at an oil refinery north of Swansea. And th the thing that sticks in my mind about this is that one could see the flames at this oil refinery some, some 20 miles away on our way from Cardiff to Swansea. There were four unexploded bombs. Well, I had to choose the one that was liable to be the most, do the most damage. There was one right by the side of a, a, an oil tank. It, it was about a 250 kilogram bomb, and clearly it was a German bomb. But the, with a, it, an extremely anxious setup altogether, because there were blazing oil tanks within a hundred yards of us roaring away like mad and there was our bomb in the middle of all this love and really it was really quite exciting my young men i was very proud of they were just ordinary butcher baker candlestick maker young men in my bomb disposal section i got them on to quarter of our intervals of, of digging the others stayed back a hundred yards the fuse uh, at the head of the fuse, which normally is the thing we could look at and try and drag out, uh, was in fact damaged by its passage through the concrete base. I was then decided that I would attempt to get out the explosive, and by reaching down, sort of standing, almost standing on my head, with a trowel, I was able to dig out from the inside of the bomb the powdered explosive and so i was able with brute force and bloody ignorance 
hang up, reach my arm right down inside the bomb and leave her the whole of the fuse pocket free and out through the back of the bomb. And what I didn't know is that a, a, an anti-withdrawal device or a booby trap in fact operated as I pulled it out. But just my luck, because the fuse head had been damaged going through the concrete, some water had managed to get in uh, into the fuse pocket and damp down the little burst of explosive which was to have started off the bomb but in fact it didn't work so I managed to get out the whole shooting match without any problem. Stuart Archer was presented with the George Cross in 1941 and awarded an OBE in 1961. He passed away in 2015 at the age of 100 years old. In 1946, Timberwood defused and safely exploded a £1,000 bomb, nicknamed Annie, which had been discovered beneath a footpath in St James's Park, London. The explosion could be felt at Buckingham Palace and the House of Commons. The BBC broadcast the event during the light programme, enabling listeners to hear the fire order and the sound of the explosion itself. Shortly after the explosion, the bomb site had a royal visitor, Queen Mary and her entourage. Timberwood received a personal letter of thanks from Queen Mary and a complimentary photograph of her visit to the bomb site. Please help to rescue and preserve more memories of the Second World War. Visit www.war-experience.org.